For those interested in railways, Ireland is often associated with its once extensive network of Norgage lines. At its peak in the 1920s, over 500 route miles of three-foot gauge track was operated in the country. As far as most people were concerned, the end of an era came in January 1961, when the final trains ran on the former West Clare section of CIE, the last remaining three-foot gauge line in the country. It may come as something of a surprise to learn that today, over 30 years after the demise of the West Clare Railway, there are over 1,000 miles of three-foot gauge track still in regular use in Ireland. In this programme, we set out to reveal Ireland's best-kept railway secret, what is probably the largest industrial railway system in Europe, the peat railways operated by Board Namona, the Irish Peat Board. The railways exist to transport peat harvested in the bogs of the Midlands and other parts of the Irish Republic. This is used mainly to generate energy in power stations or to be processed for horticultural purposes. Before looking at the railways in detail, some background on the bogs and how they were formed would be useful. Over 16% of the land mass of the island of Ireland is made up of peatlands. Undrained peat consists of 5% solids, the partially decayed remains of plants, and 95% water. The formation of the peatlands began after the end of the last ice age, which left a very uneven landscape after the ice had melted. Water accumulated in hollows and lakes were formed. The decaying remains of the plants which grew on and at the margins of these lakes built up over time and gradually filled in the lakes. These were the first peatlands and they date back about 9,000 years. The sphagnum mosses which flourish in the peatlands can absorb 20 times their own weight in water. On the face of it, the wet peatlands are not a very promising natural resource. Sawed turf, cut by hand and left to dry in the sun, was a fuel used for centuries throughout Ireland. Large-scale commercial exploitation of the bogs really only began in 1946, when Bodnamona was formed by the Irish government to develop the country's peat resources. Much of our programme concentrates on the activities of the Peat Energy Division of Bodnamona, which today supplies the fuel used to produce around 14% of the country's electricity. However, a great deal of work has to be done to turn virgin bog into a means for generating electricity. The vegetation on the surface is first removed and then the bog is drained. The top layers are then harvested to turn it into small pieces of milled peat like this. The milled peat is then left to dry, being turned by a specially adapted tractor with long harrows at the rear, which stretch the width of the section of bog being worked.
The next stage is called ridging. This surreal looking machine is a ridger. The wide blades of the ridger scoop the peat up into small ridges. These ridges are later combined by this machine called a harvester to make a stockpile. The peat is stored in these stockpiles in the bog and drawn to the power station as required and this is where the railways come into their own. Temporary lines are laid down from the main routes to reach the stockpiles. The peat is loaded onto the trains by mechanical diggers. The loaded train is hauled towards the power station. We have a few from the Locos cab, its long and heavy train snaking behind. A loaded rake of wagons approaches the reception sidings at Lanesborough in County Longford. Usually the wrecks consist of 14 or 15 bogey wagons, each containing around 10 tons of peat.
There are two power stations in use at Lanesborough, which are supplied with peat from the Mount Dillon complex of bogs. A load of peat is sampled to determine its moisture content. The locomotive then moves the wagons towards the tippler, where they will be unloaded. After the loco has uncoupled and moved it through the tippler, an under-track mechanical propulsion system takes over. Wagons are moved one at a time into the tippler. The positioning of the wagon in the tippler is checked by a retarder on the track itself beyond the tippler and a system of electronic eyes inside the machine. When the wagon is in the right place, the tippler turns the wagon through 360 degrees to unload it. The wagon couplings look too fragile to endure the strains to which they are submitted, but they rarely succumb. Once the whole rake has been dealt with, the locomotive brings the empties through the yard and out to the bog for another load.
because on any railway the track has to be kept in order. Between the passing of rakes, a permanent wayman is seen packing a set of points in the yard. Lanesborough can be a busy place, with locomotives and rakes arriving and departing throughout the working day. The Mount Dillon system is typical of the raised bogs of the Irish Midlands. Despite the level of activity which is going on, the railway, and indeed the whole peat processing industry, is relatively unintrusive in the landscape. You can drive for miles through the Midlands of Ireland and never be aware that this important industry, the source of employment for many people, and the operator of a very substantial industrial railway system, is hard at work close by. The power station at Bellacoric, in the shadow of the Neffin Mountains in the north of County Mayo, is supplied with peat produced on board Namona's Oninni and Bangor Eris bogs. Here can be seen the Irish Republic's first wind farm, an alternative and renewable source of energy being promoted by Bordnamona. The windmills are controlled by computers. The amount of energy being supplied to the national grid is shown on a digital display. Also at Bellacoric, visitors can enjoy a guided rail tour of the system on the Bellacoric bog train. The coach used in this service is none other than the passenger saloon of one of the articulated rail cars, number 3386, built for the dieselisation of the West Clare Railway by CIE in the 1950s.
From the comfort of the train, visitors can explore the wind farm and learn about the flora and fauna of the bog, as well as experience both traditional and more modern methods of peat production. The tourist train shares the tracks with the everyday revenue earning traffic of the railway. This is one of the seven triangular junctions on the Oaninny system, which takes its name from a local river. The electricity supply board power station at Bellacoric also burns peat from the bogs at Bangor Eris, some distance away. This has to be brought to the power station by road and lorries operated by Board Namona, one of which is seen here discharging its load into the Tipler. These bogs in Mayo were formed on the remains of ancient birch and pine forests. Pieces of this bog wood, stones and other incombustible material is filtered out from the conveyor which takes the peat from the tippler to the power station. There is much activity at Bellacoric as the men of the early shift change places with colleagues who are coming in to take over for the rest of the day. Apart from its valuable contribution to Ireland's energy needs, Board Namona provides considerable employment in parts of the country where the land is poor and the job prospects would otherwise be bleak. The board employs around 2,300 people full time, with another 500 taken on on a seasonal basis. The economic activity created by the peat industry holds together many communities which might otherwise have been fractured by that traditional curse of rural Ireland, emigration. The men coming on duty prepare their locomotives for the work ahead. Diesel is pumped from a rail tanker to a loco. Almost as vital as diesel for the successful operation of the bog railways is sand. The light locos hauling their heavy loads require a prodigious amount of sand to maintain adhesion on the sometimes severe gradients and curves of the permanent and temporary tracks they have to traverse. Locomotives come and go, and wrecks are marshalled for the work ahead.
Each of the board's systems is self-contained. Locomotives and the machinery used to harvest and process the peat are maintained at the workshops which are found at each complex. In the shops at Bellacoric, a locomotive gets a repaint. This is part of the extensive maintenance facility at Bora in County Offaly and one of the board's biggest systems. Here locomotives rest between duties at the refuelling point at Ferban Power Station on the Bora system. To work its hundreds of miles of three-foot gauge tracks, Borden Amona has acquired a variety of diesel locomotives over the years. In the 1950s, the fleet consisted almost entirely of Riston and Hornsby locomotives. Most of these have now been withdrawn from service, but typical of the breed is LM167, seen on a works train at Kulnamona. LM175, dating from 1958 and seen here at Ferban, was the last new three-foot gauge Ruston delivered to the board. This eight-ton machine with hydraulic transmission was fitted with a 75 horsepower Ruston engine. When introduced, it was nearly twice as powerful as most of the locomotives then in service. Its original engine has since been replaced by a Ford one. LM-175 was followed by LM-176, a 1961 local built by the board itself, which was the prototype for the locomotive design which still dominates the bog railways of Ireland, the Hunslet Wagonmaster. The first of these appeared in 1962 and over 100 were subsequently built. The Wagonmaster is an 040 diesel mechanical powered by a six-cylinder Ford engine. Transmission is either four or five speed with a fluid coupling. The Wagon Master produces a notional tractive effort of £12,000. Batches of locos continued to be built up to 1981 by Hunslet and Leeds. The Wagon Master is the workhorse of the peat railways of Bordnemona. Here Wagonmaster LM273 brings a rake of loaded wagons across the bridge over the River Brosna on the Bora system. The next locos Hunslet supplied to Bordnemona was a class of diesel hydraulics delivered in the mid-1980s. The hydraulic transmissions and modified suspensions of these locos were designed to provide improved adhesion, so essential in the working of bog railways. In the early 1990s, the board began to rebuild some of their trusty wagon masters as diesel hydraulics, and with the addition of heavy double frames, designed to improve their adhesion. One of these, LM226, is seen near Lanesborough with a rake of empties. In 1994, the board began to build their own locomotives again. These are numbered from LM389 onwards and have coming six-cylinder engines and Clark hydraulic transmissions. LM389 and 390 are seen here under construction at the Blackwater workshops. In 
In the summer of 1995, the now completed LM390 crosses the viaduct over the River Shannon at Shannon Bridge, not far from the Blackwater workshops where it was built. In addition to the wagon masters and their derivatives, other types of locomotives can be seen at work on the railways of Bode Namona. LM348 was one of a batch of 12 50 horsepower simplex locomotives bought in 1980 for use on maintenance and permanent way trains. They had air cooled Lister engines and weighed 5 tonnes. This locomotive is one of 30 Deutz diesel mechanicals supplied in two batches in 1960 and 1965 for permanent way and maintenance trains. It is hauling an oil tanker used to refuel machinery out in the bogs. This loco is one of the 20 Gleismach diesel hydraulics built in 1984 under license from Gleismach Italiana by Dundalk Engineering at the former Great Northern Railway Works in Dundalk in County Louth. It's a shame they were not turned out in line blue like many of their illustrious predecessors that emerged from that establishment since the 1930s. A number of Massey Ferguson tractors have been converted to run on rails. The rail wheels of the vehicle are driven by a chain off the tractor's rear axle. At a number of locations, redundant locomotives or those awaiting repairs can be found resting in sidings near the workshops. In addition to the locomotives, over the years the board has used rail cars of various designs, usually powered by petrol engines. This one, C80, built by Board Namona in 1972, has a Morris Minor engine. Most of the earlier types of rail cars have now been withdrawn from service, though a number, including C47, seen here at the Cavan and Leitrim Railway site at Drummond, have been preserved. The track on which the trains run varies considerably. The permanent lines consist of heavier rails and are well maintained, such as this section of newly ballasted double track near the power station at Lanesborough on the Mount Dillon system. This is an industrial railway where speeds are low, so the track in any event cannot be compared with that seen on passenger carrying public railways. Stone is loaded into one of the board's specially constructed ballast wagons, which this Ruston 48 DL will haul to its destination. The temporary track is made up of panels, which are assembled at the system's workshops. These are then transported to the site where they are required. Here a wagon laden with track panels is propelled cautiously across the Shannon Viaduct near Lanesborough.
One of the most impressive features of the industrial Norrgage railway system operated by Bodnemona is the sheer scale of the operation. To give one example, the now connected Bora and Blackwater systems in counties Offaly, Westmeath and Galway cover a distance of around 40 miles from end to end. It is not surprising that a number of the engineering and operating features regularly seen in standard gauge railways can also be observed on the board's lines. One of the branches of the Mount Dillon system has to cross the busy minor road from Lanesborough to Longford. To do this safely, a proper level crossing with gates and warning lights has been constructed. The bogs of the Mount Dillon system are located on either side of Ireland's longest river, the Shannon. The river is spanned by this impressive viaduct near Lanesborough. Visitors relaxing and fishing and those exploring the river on the variety of cruising craft which ply its tranquil waters are not disturbed or inconvenienced by the railway going about its business above their heads. How much more friendly to the environment are the trains than the only possible alternative, streams of lorries clogging and polluting the quiet country roads. At the hub of the Blackwater system, one of the largest operated by the board, at Shannon Bridge, near the power station there, an even more impressive viaduct over the Shannon has been built, crossing the river on six spans. One of the most interesting bridges on the whole Bordnamona network is that which spans the Grand Canal near Ferban on the Bora system. The Grand Canal was opened in 1804 to link Dublin to the Shannon. To get the Norrgage tracks across the canal, which like the Shannon is busy with pleasure cruisers in summer, this ingenious swing bridge has been devised. The bridge, which is electrically operated, is activated by a key carried by the loco driver. When the bridge is in place, the barrier lifts and the train can proceed. One of the busiest parts of the Grand Canal was its branch from Shannon Harbour to Ballinasloe in the eastern part of County Galway, 
a town famous for its livestock fairs. A lot of traffic on this branch of the canal was lost when the Midland Great Western Railway opened its extended line from Athlone to Ballinasloe and Galway in August 1851. When the Ballinasloe branch of the Grand Canal was finally abandoned in 1961, it was filled in and provided a ready-made route for a Bordnemona line. There was only one lock on the canal and it seemed logical to run the three-foot gauge tracks through this. The structure of Kylemore Lock is very much in place today. Even the remains of the lock gates can still be seen, though today it is used by three-foot gauge locomotives and rakes of peat wagons instead of boats. Should the canal to Balmaslow ever be reopened, it would not take too much work to return Kylemore Lock to its original condition. In the meantime, we can enjoy the most unusual spectacle of an oil gauge railway passing through a canal lock, albeit a disused one. On the Blackwater system at Shannon Bridge is another opportunity for those interested in the peat railways of Bodnamona to experience travel on the three-foot gauge. The Clonmac Noise and West Offaly Railway provides conducted tours of the system in the luxury of specially built air-conditioned rail coaches. Though it owns less than 10% of the peatlands of Ireland, Bordnemona is conscious that it is the custodian of a great and unique natural resource. The peatlands are living entities which can regenerate themselves after they have been harvested, but the board is anxious to shape peatlands which have been exploited in a fashion which will provide lasting benefit to the country in the form of jobs for the employees who had previously worked on the bogs and a landscape which is attractive for the rest of the citizens. One obvious way to do this is to plant woodlands. Other ideas are being explored. Here at Blackwater, just beside part of the bog which is still being worked, a nature reserve has been established. On the lake, a family of swans have made themselves at home. Moorhens and other wildfowl share the lake with the swans. We were fortunate to glimpse a heron on the day we visited the lake. Hares and rabbits are in abundant supply. This baby rabbit was a bit alarmed by the progress of our rail car, so we stopped to allow him to get out of the way. The environment of these wetlands is ideal for frogs, difficult to see amongst the mosses. The peatlands have their own distinctive flora. None is more unusual than the sundew, an insectivorous plant which flourishes here. The bright colours of the sundew attract insects which get trapped on its sticky leaves. The plant can then absorb its meal at its leisure. Another byproduct of the bogs is bogwood. These remains of ancient forests which were consumed by the spread of the peatlands thousands of years before were used in years gone by as kindling wood. Now some of this wood is turned into objet d'art in craft studios sponsored by Bordnemona. Most of the lines seen in action up to now have been operating on behalf of Bordnemona's Peat Energy Division the part of the company which produces milled peat from which electricity is generated. The facility and the railway system at Dern Loch is run by another part of the company, the Solid Fuels Division. This division produces peat briquettes which are made from dried and compressed milled peat. Peat briquettes are a popular form of low sulphur, low smoke solid fuel, which are used in many Irish households.
The briquette factory has its own wagon tippler to handle the milled peat, the raw material for its products. We have now come to Coolnamona in County Leash, specifically to record one of the most interesting railway spectacles which can be seen in Ireland today. At one point, the three foot gauge tracks of Bordnamona pass under Iron Road Iron's Dublin to Cork main line. With look or judgment, sites like these can be observed. A Dublin bound express hauled by one of the latest General Motors 201 class diesels speeds on its way as a train of milled peat trundles underneath. Hunslet Diesel Hydraulic LM380 heads back to the bog for another load of peat. As the Norrigage loco makes its return journey, freight trains on Ireland's two gauges pass over and under each other. The broad gauge working is off the anhydrous ammonia wagons running between Shelton Abbey in County Wicklow and Cork. Quietly and efficiently, day in and day out, the Irish Norrigage far from being an anachronism that died out with the age of steam, is making a vital contribution to the economy of the country. Norrigate's trains move the peat that generates a substantial proportion of Ireland's electricity, saving the country vast sums of money which would otherwise have to be expended in importing fuel for the power stations. The trains also carry the peat which is turned into the horticultural products which are valuable exports for Ireland and an invaluable aid for both professional horticulturists and those who garden for pleasure around the world. Those interested in the railways at Bordnamona can travel on the three foot gates themselves on the tourist railways at Bellacoric and at Shannon Bridge. However, apart from these two locations where railway enthusiasts and other visitors are welcomed with open arms, we must stress that the facilities and the railways of Bordnamona are in or are part of potentially dangerous industrial environments. Persons visiting these installations without written permission are trespassing and possibly endangering their safety and those of the board's employees in the process.
We hope you have enjoyed this introduction to Ireland's best kept railway secret and the next time you see a bale of Irish peat in your local garden centre you will know that it probably began its journey from the heart of Ireland on its way to make someone's garden bloom in a bogey wagon on a three foot gauge railway hauled by one of the board's redoubtable wagon masters.